Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 12 in the how to make a 2D platformer course. In today's video we are going to be expanding on the subject of last time and now creating a respawn method that will uh, of course be triggered whenever our player dies. So let's just head right into Unity and uh, as usual if you have any questions whatsoever please go to forum.brackies.com where I among many other developers are just waiting to answer your questions. Cool, so first thing we are going to do here is we are going to head into our um, GM object under the game master script so double click that to open it up in mono develop and we can see that right now this um, uh, this only has one method called the kill player so let's expand a bit on this let's go ahead and make um, kind of a uh, improvised singleton, singleton pattern um, I'm not going to show you how to do a full singleton but I will show you how to make sure that we have an instance of Game Master running that we can access. So if you don't know what a singleton pattern is, it's basically basically a way to make sure that we only have one instance of a class in any given scene. So the way we are going to do this here is we are going to make a public static Game Master. And we're going to call this, uh, let's say, GM. We could also call it instance. And then in our start function, so void start, we are going to say if gm is equal to null, then we want to set gm to game object dot find. Uh, I don't remember, did we put a tag on gm? Let's just do a, a, a tag here. So add tag game master or gm. I'm going to do gm, I think just gm or well, we need to remember to assign it also like this and uh, we've actually not made this into prefabs so let's just go ahead and do that too drag it down here and now cool we can head back into the uh, game master script and I'll say find dot find game object with tag make sure that this is singular and then we're going to write gm so what this does is basically we have a, a static variable uh, called gm and we set it to the instance of the game master class if it's not already set. So this is just a way for us to always have both a reference to uh, static stuff like this by just doing game master dot kill player. But now we also have a reference to the instance of the class so we can do stuff with um, uh, with the, the unity inspector we can drag things in and change things in there and this is super cool because now we can uh, whenever we want to access, access those we can just use gm so to show you what this means in, in in practice let's go ahead and write a respawn method so let's do um, public void respawn player and I don't think we're going to be taking any arguments. And now what we can do inside of this is we can, uh, let's say, first off, uh, spawn our player. So let's create a public transform that is going to be the player prefab. And uh, yeah, we're just going to start off with that. So we can say instantiate player prefab. And now we need to give it a position and here we could just make a reference to a spawn point. So let's do public transform spawn point and then we'll do spawn point dot position here and then spawn point dot rotation over here. This way we can simply assign a spawn point in the inspector and drag it around if we want to change it. We could also randomize this later. Uh, and make an array of spawn points so we can spawn multiple places but for now we're just going to stick with one let me know in the comments if you want to see the random version cool so now that we have that in there what we can also do um, is maybe uh, we could in a future video also add some particles on, onto this so I'm just going to debug.log to do 
add spawn particles. And this would be a great place to do it. You would simply create a transform with a reference to the particles and instantiate them here, just like we instantiated the player. So now that we want to call this respawn player function in the kill player uh, method, all we have to do is simply say gm dot respawn player. And now we've called the method. So if we save this now and head over into Unity, we'll see if we have any errors. Cannot implicitly convert type Unity game object to game master. So let's see what's going on here. Oh yeah, we have to do um, game object dot find game object with tag. So we could here do dot get component and then game master to make sure that we are getting the game master component uh, and not a game object. We could also just change this to game object, but I think it makes more sense that this is of type game masters, of type the class here. Cool. So now we head back into Unity and let's see if this is working. So we hit play. And uh, oops, we of course also have to assign our player prefab and our spawn point. So now head into the project and uh, let's first off find our player prefab. Make sure that you apply all changes. And if I remember correctly, we actually didn't drag him out of the sample assets, even though we've changed him so much. So go into there on the 2D on the prefabs and here he is. So let's just drag him into the root folder, into our assets folder. And uh, now we can select the GM object and drag him onto the player prefab position. Now the spawn point. Uh, let's go ahead and make an empty game object. So just do Command Shift N or Control if you're on a Windows. Let's reset the transform so we know where we have it. Let's call this spawn point and maybe just drag it up a bit so he won't spawn inside of the ground. So let's just put it there looks fine it's okay that it it's uh, on top of the place where he's he starts and uh, now we can actually label this uh, just like we have labeled the ceiling check and the ground check uh, let's label this spawn point so we can easily find spawn points throughout our scene so to do this simply click on the box here and we can now select an icon uh, we could also uh, import an image as an icon, but we can just use one of the default ones. So let's do the purple one here. And you can see that it will name it spawn point. You could also do one of the um, uh, one of the shapes. It's, it's completely up to you. I just like having the name on there. So now that we have that available, uh, let's go ahead and maybe uh, drag this under the uh, GM object. It makes sense to have it there. And now let's hit apply. Uh, oh, yeah, we also have to drag it under the spawn point slot. And now let's hit apply to apply all changes to a GM object. Now, when we hit play and jump down, you can see that our player instantly reappears. But that might not be what we're interested in. Many, many games have this delay to kind of punish whenever you die. So in order to do this, we could maybe... Uh, punish the player by simply reloading the level and therefore every progress he's made is just going to be gone but instead what i want to do at least for now is just create a timer uh, that will count down uh, a couple of seconds before we, we respawn the player uh, so in order to do this we need to use the uh, or we could use the yield return new wait four seconds and now we can put a time in there. Let's make a public variable for that. So public integer spawn delay. And then inside of the wait for seconds, we're just going to put the spawn delay. And let's default this to, let's say, two. So this will wait a certain amount of seconds, in this case, two, before it goes ahead and instantiates the player. Also, it would be a great place to put some kind of uh, audio that will uh, play or, or tell us that our, our player is respawning. We could also do some GUI. I don't have too much time for uh, in this video to do all of the particles and audio and GUI stuff, but that might be for a future video. Again, if it's something you're interested in, please leave it as a comment and I'll make sure to, to, to uh, create a video for it. But here we can just for now leave a to-do that we should add 
waiting for spawn sound. Cool. And uh, this looks pretty good, but it won't actually compile. And the reason why is whenever we do a yield, return new wait for second, we, whenever we use the yield uh, here, we have to make this not a type void, but the return type I enumerator. Again, I've talked about this in, a, in other videos. If, if you're uh, um, very confused by this, please go ahead and, and look up uh, coroutines in Unity and uh, things will make a lot more sense. But for now, just know that this is something we have to do. And whenever we, we call an I enumerator, we, we can't just do gm.respawn player. We actually have to write uh, gm, because we're calling it on the gm object, dot start coroutine and then put in the gm dot respawn player and make sure you have gm in front of both the start coroutine and the respawn player or it's not going to work cool so now when we save this this should be working just perfectly so we hit play we jump down wait a couple of seconds one two and there he is cool so you will notice that right now uh, we are indeed spawning and we can jump around and we can do this as many times as, as needed. But uh, our camera isn't really following anymore. And the reason why is right now in our camera script, if we open that up, the uh, camera 2D follow. Actually, I just want to quickly drag this out from the sample assets too into the assets folder. There. Uh, it's just been annoying me that it was inside of that folder when we are actually using it so much in our game. So now let's open it up. And you will notice that the reason why we uh, sorry, the, our, our camera just disconnects is that we've put this if target is equal to null, then return. And the target stays null. Uh, we, we need to implement some kind of functionality that will check uh, or search for the player when, he, um, when we don't have a reference to him. So... What we could do is have something in the game master function that's, that sends over a reference to the player whenever he's instantiated. Or we could just inside of the camera 2D follow script make a function that searches for the player uh, and when he finds it sets the target, target equal to the player. So I think we are going to go with the second method but if you would like to do the other one please experiment. Cool. So again, we are going to check if our target is equal to null, but we are going to do more than one thing. So let's just open up some brackets here. And uh, the first thing we are going to do is now we are going to find player. Uh, yeah, just find player or search for player, whatever you want to do. So we are going to call this find player method that we're going to be making in a sec. And then we want to return. Now we can go ahead and make this uh, method and uh, it's just going to be a normal return type of void which means we won't return anything and we're going to call it find player and uh, inside of this uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, use game object dot find game object with tag uh, on the player but this operation is actually pretty taxing on the computer and not something you should be doing every frame. So instead, let's go ahead and make a, a, a kind of a delay uh, that will make sure that we only search for the player, let's say, two times a second. So to do this, uh, what we want to do is we want to first make a private variable up here uh, of type float. And uh, we're going to call this next time to search and uh, we're going to default this to zero and uh, this is going to store the point in time that we want to do our next, next search for the player and now inside of the find player we can simply say if next time to search is less than or equal to time dot time so if the point in time that we want to search has passed or is equal to right now then we want to find our player and we do this using uh, game object 
dot find game object with tag again make sure this is singular and the tag is going to be player and remember whenever we search for a tag we need to also check that our player has the player tag so if he doesn't make it now and uh, let's just store this in a temporary uh, variable so let's do um, game objects and let's just call this uh, search result because if we don't find the player this is just going to be equal to null and if we find him this is of course going to be equal to the player so what we can do now is we can check if search result is equal to null uh, then we can um, or is not equal to null is what I meant to say if it's not equal to null then we can set our target to be equal to uh, our search result dot transform because if we just set that directly we will get an error whenever we try to access the transform because we can't access the transform of null so we want to make sure that it's not null and then set the target to the search results transform and then down here what we want to say is that our next time to search is going to be equal to time dot time and then plus whatever um, delay that you want in between searches. So I'm just going to do let's say 0 0.5 so we will search two times each, um, each second. So if that makes sense to you now let's uh, head back into unity and let's see here we can't implicitly convert a double to a float. So where are we here? Oh yeah, of course we need to change this to an F. Um, so now inside of Unity we are error free. And uh, under our GM object, um, everything should be looking just the same. But now when we go ahead and hit play, and we jump down, our camera is going to search for our player and it's going to snap right back to him. And it's even going to do so smoothly because of the way we've done movement with the camera. So that's it for respawning our player. I think this looks pretty, uh, pretty awesome actually. And uh, next time we might have a look at uh, doing something with uh, some audio or some particles or something. But that's completely up to you. If you want to see it, leave it in a comment. Or in general, if there's something else you want to see, just leave it in as a suggestion below. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.